Hey everyone, we're now in the studio and we're ready to start filming a shoot for Devil's Food Cake, low key. This is one I've really been looking for because I love chocolate. So I can't wait till we're done that I get to actually get a piece of this. So what do I mean by low key light? Low key portraits and low key lighting are gonna be in general darker. We have darker backgrounds, we're gonna have darker clothing, dark hair, dark everything. And that presents some interesting challenges for metering. Now, of course your camera can't do this because it's gonna see everything dark and it's gonna to wanna to overexpose. So we need to go manual. I've got two pieces of gear to help me. I've got a Sekonic 478 light meter and I also brought a 308S meter that we're gonna to use today as well. These are gonna allow us to get the amount of light falling on our subject's face and get a great result every time. We're also gonna be able to measure light ratios. So when we have a separation light on the hair or two lights on the face, we need to know what those two numbers are and that's what this will give us. When you're metering for low key portraits, you're gonna to have to rethink a little bit how you place the meter. Now I've got the dome on the meter here up and it's gonna be a little different even when we're dealing with one light. Typically for high key or a normal portrait, if I just have one light, I'm gonna meter right back to that light. In this case, we're gonna cheat a little bit back to the camera because we wanna have a little bit of an idea about what's going on on the shadow side of the face. If you think about it, this dome kind of mirrors the three-dimensional aspect of the face. So by positioning this back towards the camera a little bit, Half of it will be lit by our light coming directionally. The other half will be more in shadow and it's gonna give us a little more realistic view of what happens when we're dealing with low key light. So we have a handful of choices to make when we're dealing with low key light. The biggest thing is we've gotta control it. We wanna, don't want it spreading all over the place. We've gotta keep it focused on the subject because that's gonna allow us to create separation from a dark background. Now to make that happen, I've got some soft boxes with grids. I've got a snoot which is right here and you can see through it. It's got a grid on the end of it. This will keep the light very focused and keep it from spreading out. Now, in addition, I had some fun in the hardware store the other night and I've got some homemade stuff. I've got a downspout, uh, it kind of is another kind of snoot. What's really interesting about this is a standard garden downspout uh, for your house actually fits directly over a speed light because we're gonna use some speed lights as well. And also to make the background a little interesting, I've got a piece of cardboard that I've cut into a window shaped flag. And what this is gonna do is allow us to cast the effect of a window shining on our background just by using this. And the light source that's gonna do this is a speed light. So I've got a speed light on a stand here. And yes, I've got all kinds of snoots around here, but I wanted to show you this because this was fun. I've got a four inch to three inch reducer. I was hanging out in the plumbing and heating department and just have a bungee cord going around the back of the head with a little um, gutter drain cover that's on here with some tape. So this is gonna allow me to keep this light focused. I'm gonna use this to shoot through that window shaped flag so we can cast the effect of a window behind me. It's gonna be really cool. I've got some other stuff too. We'll play with it as we go along. Uh, but I wanna get started with our shooting. I don't wanna spend a lot of time talking. Let's start shooting and then we'll discuss it as we're going. So let's get our model on the set. We are really lucky today. We've got the beautiful Tony with us. So Tony, come on set. All right, we're ready to start shooting and we have the beautiful Tony on set. Hi Tony, how are you? Hello. Uh, this is the first time I'm working with Tony. Actually, you've worked with my wife Diane before. Yes, I so she, Diane's uh, filming some of our video today. So she's got a familiar face there, not just scary me here on set. Uh, so we're gonna start out with right away with some dramatic light and I'm gonna use the big soft box here and I'm gonna have Tony looking off in this direction. What I'm gonna kind of go for is somewhat of a Rembrandt light. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the light to go past her nose a little bit and form kind of a triangle underneath her far eye. We still wanna keep it dramatic though, but since I have this big light coming in from the side, it's gonna wrap around our head a bit, so we may not need a second light. Off to the other side, I do have the speed light shooting through my window flag to cast some interesting things on the background. So before I can start shooting, what I need to do is I need to meter. I need to know exactly what's going on. Now remember, as I said before, I'm not gonna meter into the light. I've got my radio trigger right here. If I hit my waiting button, take a reading, and I get F13. However, 
If we were to shoot that way, with a low key set, it's gonna end up being way underexposed. We don't want that to happen. Remember, as I mentioned the dome, it mirrors the three dimensional shape of the head. What I really wanna do is I wanna have the dome kind of facing the way Tony's facing. So if you look, say right, uh, actually closer to, let's see, towards Diane a little bit. Yeah, if you look kind of over that way, I'm gonna actually meter back this way. And what this is gonna tell me is what is the light on the far side of the dome, which is the side of her face that is gonna be lit. This is short lighting, the side of her face away from the camera is getting lit. So I wanna make sure that this side of her face doesn't go completely in the dark. So I'm gonna re-meter, remember we had F13 metering back to the light. When we meter back to where she's looking, we get F8, that's a big difference. In fact, that's F8 to F11 to 13, that's one and a third stop. It's gonna change the mood. Now actually, all of those exposures in between F8 and F13 are valid. The F13 shot would be very dark. F8 is going to lighten things up a bit because it's going to want to have some of the far side of her face illuminated. I'm gonna guess F8 to F9 is gonna be good. Let's give it a shot. I'm just gonna put my trigger on my camera and we'll get some shots. Okay, so we metered and we got F8 with Tony looking off to this direction, F13 from this side of her face. I'm gonna guess just from experience that F8 is gonna be a little bit too hot. Uh, it's gonna be more of a happy it's gonna open things up, but we're going low key, we're going more dramatic. So we do want it to be a little darker. So by metering F8, that's gonna put the far side of her face, give it a little bit more light. F13 would make it go completely black. I'm gonna guess we wanna be somewhere in between. I'm gonna guess the correct exposure is gonna be between nine and 10. And I can, once I find that number, I can adjust my metering position for that. So rather than metering back to this direction, I'll follow her nose, which will be out to here. And I bet that's gonna give me probably F9, F10. In fact, let's not guess, let's, let's measure. I'm gonna ask you to help me out. You see this button that says test? Yes. I'm gonna ask you to hit it in a second. Okay, so look out again. See where it says the, the letters on top of that? Mm -hmm. All right, I want you to do it there. Okay, hit the button. Oop, hit it again. There we go. And what did I say? 10. F10, so we got F10. That's with her looking off to this direction, kind of splitting the difference between the camera and the light. And I'm gonna guess that's gonna be a good result. I did a couple shots at F8, thought they were a little bit hot. Hot meaning slightly too bright, not hot. Can't take a picture of Tony and not have it be hot. <laughs> uh, but I want, again, I want to control. I want to control the highlights from going too bright and I want to keep that kind of deep mood. So let's go ahead. Nice. Yeah, there we go. All right, turn your head this way a little more and a little more serious look, less of a smile, more, more contemplative. In fact, lean your head away from me a little. There we go. Nice. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that was the answer. Uh, F8 was pretty good. F, F10, I like a little better. So let's make sure we get a couple of shots with both. And we'll, we'll see what you like as well. I'm gonna get a couple more. Yeah. All right, start to rotate your head towards me a little more and now eyes at me. Lean forward at the waist towards me and drop this shoulder right there, good. Beautiful, I need to bring the light around a little bit. Now I'm not changing the distance of the light to her so I don't have to re-meter. Okay, right there. Love it, love it, yeah. I think F10 is the answer, I think you're gonna agree. Because what happens with the light being kind of close at F8, right this part of your forehead here, it's getting a little bit too bright. By bringing it down to F10, that gave us perfect exposure. And that's one of the things you have to learn about metering. There is some subjectivity to it. It's not always just meter this direction. It all depends on the mood and what's going on in the background and the clothing and the hair and all that other stuff. So again, the meter back to here, you would do that with somebody with lighter skin. If I had somebody that was really light skinned, then I would meet her back to here because if not, the far side of their face close to the fist would be blown out. However, dark skin isn't quite as reflective as real white skin. So I need to cheat a little bit so that I can make sure that I get 
beautiful light all around you. And that just comes with a little bit of experience, but the meter will get you there. That's all you need to do. So we have a lot of fun toys to play with. Yes. We've got a smoke machine, we've got some grids, we've got soft boxes, we've got a beauty dish, so, and we got some uh, props for her. So uh, let's have some fun. All right, so we've got Tony lounging because it's an important moment, right? It's the moment you've been waiting for. Yes, we're going to unveil the cake and actually crack it open. Uh, but we're, we've changed things up. I've got something interesting going on. Now we're shooting primarily with the speed lights. I've got one speed light and a little soft box here. And off to my left, I have one of the studio lights with the grid snoot, which is adding the light to this side of her face. Behind her, I got something fun. On the floor, on a low mount, I've got a speed light with this red dome. This is, again, a little do-it-yourself thing. This is a, a DVD spindle. You know, you buy DVDs you can burn. This is the spindle for the top of the case, and I just spray painted it red, put it on top of my speed light. Um, this has got a uh, Fotix Aries radio trigger on it, which is what I'm using to talk to everything. Uh, even though I'm using a studio light here, I have the studio light's white light sensor on, so that when the flash, the uh, speed lights fire, it sees and it fires as well. And to add some interest to this, I have a little fog machine. Not expensive, I think I paid 50 bucks for it. Great idea for adding environmental kind of moody stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the fog shoot right here behind the chair where Tony's sitting. And the red light, the red dome from that DVD cover, the flash is gonna fire through that and illuminate the fog behind Tony in red while I've got the speed light coming here. And we need to add one really more important piece. All right, so we have a cake here just waiting to be cut open, right? Yeah, yeah you and me both. So we're gonna cut this open, we're gonna give Tony a piece, we're gonna get her posing with the cake, because that's the whole theme of this. We've got devil's food cake, we've got Tony in red and black, we've got red fog behind her. It's gonna be a great mood shot. So let's cut this up. Yes. And, <laughs> and let's get some shots. All right, so <laughs> Tony's dying here. <laughs> she really wants the cake. So I've metered the lights. I've got F8 here. I've got about F7. I moved the light back a little bit from right here. I re-metered them. F8 in my camera. Uh, since the light from here is coming back, the having it uh, the same or almost the same as the main is fine. I'm gonna fire up the fog machine. It's gonna let the fog come up behind her and be illuminated by the flash behind the chair. So you ready? Okay, get a piece ready. Get a piece on the fork. And there we go, there's fog. Get it right up close, you're just about ready to eat it. Oh yeah, close your eyes, close your eyes. Love it, now, get, okay, open your mouth, start to eat it, go ahead, go, go, go. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> yeah, that's it, I love it. All right, we needed another piece of cake for this part of the shoot. So just a little change up of, uh, clothing, a wardrobe. We've got her in a nice cape with a red inside to kind of go with our red fog that we've got in the fog machine. We have the uh, little speed light behind her with the red dome that is shooting up into that. And again, the only thing I need to be concerned about is our main light, which is not this thing here, that's just the video light. It's gonna be a single speed light up against the ceiling that's gonna be coming horizontally down at her. I wanna kind of go for a loop lighting where the light's gonna be directly in front of her and it's gonna cause just a little shadow, maybe almost a butterfly. It'll be almost directly in front of her. Little shadow underneath the nose and a little bit off to one side. Uh, a dramatic light, something that really works for everybody. So I've got uh, Diane holding the light, so she's gonna put it up along the ceiling. As soon as she's ready, we'll go ahead and get a meter reading. So if you put that up there, as high as you can. Good, right there is good. All right, so I've got my meter. I'm using the 308S now, by the way. And I'm gonna meter right down here. And I'm getting at 100 ISO, I'm getting F8. Sounds good. Let's do it. So again, I've got all the th other stuff going on. I do have uh, the snoot light off on the side that I'm gonna turn off. This is gonna be my only light, with the exception of the speed light behind her, whose sole job is to illuminate the fog and turn it red. So let me just get that in place. And fortunately my fog machine has a little remote on the floor I can step on 
and you can have a piece of cake in a second. Yeah. You'd have to pose with it. Okay, so let's get a couple of shots with that. Fog's going, let's get a lot of it. Okay, right up against the ceiling with the light. Fog's starting to show. And, oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, chin down more. I want to kind of like eyes almost looking up like that. That's it, beautiful. Oh, I love that. All right, you can get a piece of cake now. Down, down, down. Yeah, oh, man, that is good. Okay, real quick, die one more. Okay, get ready to eat it. Ready, almost. Pull it away from your mouth, there's a smidge right there. Chin down. Yeah, love it, good, have at it. So Tony, here, we're gonna do something a little different. What I'm gonna do is I have a single speed light in this big soft box, and this soft box has a grid on the front of it that'll keep the light extremely directional. And I'm gonna have Tony come right in front of this soft box and just do profile shots right into her. So actually, if you get right here, about right there, dead center, and I want you looking right into the soft box. And if you just pull your hair away a little the other side, pull away from your eyes just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Now behind her, right over here, I've got a big silver reflector. So we're only using one light, just this one light. And th what this is gonna do is it's gonna illuminate the mask of the face, but in profile, it's gonna be really cool. Again, I'm gonna use the Sekonic 308. This is a very basic kind of metering style. So I'm gonna position it right under her chin. Now in this case, I am gonna meter, again, slightly back towards me. I'm gonna come about 45 degrees off, hit the meter to wait, get my reading, and it tells me where she is at, uh, I'm getting F10. So I put that in the camera and let's get a couple of shots. And that is lovely. You might not think of having somebody this close to a light but it really creates incredible results. Now I want to get a little more reflection on the back of her. So I've actually got to bring the reflector right up close because this light behind her or in front of her is very directional. I do want to keep the reflector out of the picture. I'm probably going to go, just, I'm just going to shoot a couple verticals here. All right, ready Tony? Beautiful. Actually, come about three quarters towards me now. So start to look towards me. Look, actually look at me right there. Beautiful. Tilt your head away from me just a little. Nice. Lovely. Okay. We're going to go a little darker, a little more dramatic. And I'm going to do that by just asking Tony to come this way out of the light. So Tony, take a step this way. And what this is going to do now is it's going to it's going to illuminate just the rim of her face, maybe a little of the far cheek. Her distance to the light hasn't changed much. I know it's changed a little bit, so I'm gonna just open up to F9 from F10. Okay, ready? Yeah, that's nice. Lovely, now close your eyes. Love it. All right, we can even take that one step further and just get a very little slight rim light. So come out a little bit further. Now, she's pretty far out of light at this point, so I'm gonna have to re-meet her because I need to see what's going on. She's barely getting any light right here. So I'm gonna, in this case, I'm gonna meet her back to me because again, she's getting a little bit of light from the light and kind of nothing from out here. I wanna split the difference. You saw them. Yes, I did. Pretty cool look. Yeah, it's very interesting looking, and we'll also play with them. I'll see how they look in black and white, because I usually love the look of that in black and white. Two more things to do. Great. We're gonna take this and get you sitting, and we're gonna bring the light from above and do that same kind of rim light on her with her reclined. So this is our reclining shot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of rim light a little bit like we did with the standing up portraits. Not quite as extreme. And in this case, I'm going to have to enlist Diane to actually shoot the camera because I'm going to hold this up against the ceiling. It's a, it's a 14 by 50 something softbox. I've got a single speed light in here. And actually, let me tell you, I think it's set at a quarter power. Let's see. Yes, I've got a speed light set at quarter power on manual. It's our only light going through this box. 
We went ahead and metered it, went with me holding this up against the ceiling, and we got F5 at 100 ISO. And that's it, let's get a couple of shots. Oh, I can just show you here. I'll show you the position. So I'm gonna back off. We wanna get all of Tony, and I'm putting the light actually behind her because I wanna cause a little bit of a rim light and it's gonna be basically right there. That's where we metered from. I'll stand out of the way so we can get her full length. Love it. This is gonna be our last shot and uh, I'm gonna try something, one more thing a little bit different, uh, again, to keep this kind of low key theme going. Uh, in this case, what I did was I got a piece of plexiglass and I've just got it clamped to a light stand and we sprayed water on it because it's going to be the effect of, of having Tony look through uh, wet glass, maybe looking off, waiting for someone, someone that's kind of the story. And you can see here, when I come over behind here, you can see some of the, the glare. I've got my little spray bottle here. So I'll spray a bunch of water on here. When you're doing something like this, it's very important that you pay attention to the angle of the light. In fact, you can see some glare here from the, uh, the studio lights. I will turn those all off. The only light I'm gonna have, actually I'm gonna use two lights. I've got the speed light in the big soft box with the grid on this side. And on this side, I've got another speed light at 1 8 power in another small kind of little grid soft box. So those two are gonna create our lighting. This is gonna be our main. This is gonna act as a fill. They're both up very close. And I'm gonna have Tony back a little from the plexiglass kind of leaning forward to go like reaching for the window. So that's gonna be kind of the story. Let's see what we get. Wow, that was another fun and successful shoot. I really love low-key lighting. I find it offers a lot of opportunity for drama, a little bit of naughtiness, a little bit of really high contrast, a little bit of fun, a little bit of moodiness. It's really a great medium, a great style to shoot portraits, possibly my favorite, and it also lends itself beautifully to black and white portraits. And what made it all possible? Well, our two little friends here, the Sakonic 478, the Sakonic 308S. Both gave me the information I needed to get that perfect exposure for the mood. Now, I hope you understand that there is some subjectivity when metering. I hope you saw that. Uh, when I'm dealing with one light and I've got someone that's got darker skin, I'm not going to meter just back to the light because that's going to make the shadows go way too dark. Tony's skin was darker and not as reflective of someone with lighter skin like me. So what I do is rather than meter back to the light, rather than meter back directly to the camera, I usually split the difference because I want the side of the dome to mirror the side of the face that's not getting any light. And that averaging will give me a better exposure. Yes, you've got some latitude to play after the fact, but it's nice to get it right in camera and we got some really great results. These will give you the information you need. That's really the bottom line. There's no way your camera can measure this. You need to have a light meter. Yes, you can futz around and keep doing adjustments and trying to get it just right, but that's really unprofessional and it's gonna be really hit or miss. A light meter gives you the information you need every time. This is an indispensable tool in the studio. It's not even really an option. You can't bake a cake without measuring cups. You don't wanna bake a portrait without a light meter. So that's it for today, Devil's Food Cake. We got a bunch left. I think I might have some for dessert tonight. So until next time, hope to see you online again soon. Bye-bye.